Um, it's perhaps fitting uh, today that our last speaker of the semester is one of our own. Um, uh, Professor Rasmi Shukonde is, uh, uh, got her MA and her PhD from the University of Michigan. Uh, she was uh, studying uh, um, uh, uh, archaeology. She's currently a professor at uh, Silbukon University uh, in Thailand, where she works on, uh, she's uh, focusing on a, a project on cave survey and database systems in uh, Ma Hong Son province. Uh, which aims to protect caves uh, from loss through rapid tourism development. Uh, she is, uh, has, has uh, a, a, a number of wonderful accomplishments attached to her. Um, uh, she is the co-founder and co-editor of Southeast Asian Archaeology International Newsletter. She's also an, an advisory board member for the World Archaeology Journal, Asian Perspectives, Bulletin of Indo-Pacific Prehistory and Archaeology. She has chapters in two recent uh, publications, A New Perspectives in Global Public Archaeology and Comparative Archaeology's A Sociological View of the Science of the Past. Um, and we're delighted to have her welcome her back today and have her speak uh, on uh, archaeology World War II, uh, the borderland between Thailand and Myanmar. Please uh, join me in welcoming Rasmi Chukundet. Thank you. It's really nice to be back, you know, here again. I just uh, ran away from flooding in Thailand uh -huh. and uh, hot, hot weather. I think that actually this time it's raining a lot in Thailand. So I just, you know, uh, come here, just get a change. Anyway, so today my talk is will be the archaeology of World War II is part of my recent research in in uh, Mang Son province, and uh, today I'm just going to give you an overview of the, you know, what I am doing, and uh, so um, okay. So the outline of my talk today today is will be the I give you a brief historical, you know, background of the World War Two in Thailand and also Mang Son. And also, I would give you the, you know, provide you the evidence, you know, from the archaeological perspective, and also the historical evidence that I did, uh, you know, collect from during my uh, research. And the last part is will be the context of the World War heritage, you know, in the contemporary society, you know, like what happened after, you know, we have done uh, some survey and collect more information. What is going on? now in 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 Mang Son province so uh i conduct a research basically you know i start from the area that called bang Wapa. actually is connect to the it's closer to the border you know one border of uh thailand and burma and i did that is all archaeological you know survey but then later on you know because of uh if you okay let me ask how many of you that been to Mang Son, or you know about Mang Son? Okay, you know actually that area is very you know uh, a lot of like uh, human trafficking, a lot of drug trade and things like that. And when we finished the survey in Bang Mapa, the the it's kind of like we renamed the area because it has been known more about the archaeological research and the long history of the human occupation live in Thailand. And then, you know, uh, we have a lot of evidence from the uh, World War II in another uh, district. So uh, some of the scholars there asked me that, you know, could I do the survey in this area? So at least we can collect the information of the World War II there. So I thought that, okay, I need to expand my research area as well. So I, I moved to another area that it's still connect to uh, uh, the borderland between uh, Thai and Burma. Anyway, so my research that I did, so I it came from my archaeological survey, the ethnographic interview, and also the oral, oral hist you know, hist historical interview of the people who lived during the war, war time. Okay, so so what we did, <coughs> I just show you the picture first that uh, we did walk along the the you know the the Japanese what the people there call is Japanese uh, uh, route, but the Japanese soldier themselves they call this a uh, white skeleton, you know route because I think that over hundred thousand of the Japanese or you know uh, more than that die 
along this route that is only, you know, from, from the border, the village that I work to the border is only 13 kilometers. But then it's, it's got into like Burma and also because this road is uh, supposed to um, uh, take the Japanese to Burma and then to India. So that is the, the aim. So along the way, actually the way that they marched to Burma that time, no one died. But the way back after their defeat is over 100,000, but very little you know, known among the Westerner. But it really has been known a lot for the you know, uh, Japanese and local people. You know. So this is the way that we, you know, we did survey and we saw the truck and things like that. And the same like in the Philippines and other parts of Southeast Asia that Japanese go, you know, people look search for the goal. So along the side, you know, you got a lot of looting, you know, along the road. Because, you know, the oral history they say that, oh, you know, this is the Japanese cemetery, this one there. So people went there just to find the try to find the goal. So anyway. Okay, let's look at the history, you know, from the historical perspective. The reason that I chose this area to talk is because it's unknown history, you know, and uh, very few in the uh, Western involvement, unlike the Bridge Over River Kwai, uh, and the high number of death, and also the high number of uh, war witnesses that's still alive in comparison to other part of, of, uh, of Thailand. And the richest archaeological evidence. You know, people say that some of the, the archaeological record that found along this road, they took it to Gantanaburi, you know, to make the parts of the, the exhibit as the war museum in Gantanaburi. So, you know, it has been missing a lot of information allow, you know, from this route. And also, this is the case that it presents a good relationship between Thai and Japanese. Unlike other parts of Thailand, the memory of the war is so crude and, you know, violent and bad memory, you know. But this place is surprisingly, it's really good, good, good memory. But we will see that what is the fact of fiction that happened, you know, here. So it's okay. Let's see. Oops. So that we did the oral history interview, and uh, so the area that we work here is the district of Kunyum, is the Chan. Uh, majority of the people is the Chan population and the Karen, you know, uh, ethnic group that live here. So this is part of the historical kind of like places that used to be the hospital and the camp for the Japanese. And uh, we did try to make a documentary. Actually, we did a documentary and we did try to walk the same, you know, like uh, route that uh, the Japanese walk. And uh, I will tell you later when we have time about this. So this is the kind of like the route that uh, is not in Thailand, but it just kind of like just to show you the atmosphere, how it looked like. And it's beautiful, you know, it's really the, it's unbelievable that I thought that when I walk, I thought that my leg is, I couldn't f feel my leg because, you know, you walk straight and then, and uh, it just really, you know, when you climb up, it it just, beautiful landscape and it's it's hide the tree is make you like hide from the air you know if the plane came there's no way that they can see that anyway oops okay so the what happened in the historical background Thailand was occupied by the Japanese from 1941 actually the Japanese came into Thailand as a businessman as a banker professor teacher for a long time and they were kind of like undercover until when the Japanese announced the war. Then they kind of like, you know, opened themselves up, you know, some of them. And then, uh, and they were there between like 1941 uh, to 45. And uh, then the, they make a uh, kind of like agreement with the Thai Prime Minister, Black Pibun Som Kram, to, to pass to Thailand through, you know, Mal Malaysia and also, you know, southern Thailand and also um, to the north. And the Thai agree, you know, uh, agree for the Japanese troops to, to pass through that. And Thailand was the, also the best 
operation. Actually, the prime minister, you know, sent a, a kind of like memo to all of the, you know, government officer in Thailand that please facilitate the Japanese, you know, just help them everywhere that they go. Please do that. So in the history of the oral history, that when we ask people, they told that, you know, they got the, you know, kind of like announcement, the memo and the letter and, you know, order that you have to facilitate the, the, the Japanese everywhere that they went there. And uh, so the, the local kind of like, you know, government have to, find, you know, have to um, kind of like um, collect the labor to to really make the road so that and they pay surprisingly unlike the bridge over river Kwai in Kantanaburi, they pay the money you know for for the it's just like uh 50 stang so like half a baht if anyone of you went to to thailand it's very small amount of money and they mobile people everywhere if you live from one village they uh, took you to work in another village. So, you know, people there have no way to know that, you know, what are you doing and where are you going? Anyway, so in, in uh, Kunjuam, you know, a district that I work, it's three years, only three years. The whole thing happened only three years from uh, 1942 to 45. And, uh, okay, they hire, and this is the what happened. And um, and the uh, the troop that you know there are so many uh, troop that went there and they used the temple for the large forest and hospital. But this is the way back. What happened to 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 uh, um, when I start working here is like uh, people talking about it. Some of the local um, officer there could start to buy all of the artifacts, Japanese artifacts, and he found the uh, help the local kind of like, you know, uh, uh, government to found the local museum, World War Two. But what happened is like, it's brought the artifacts out of context. I have no way that what, what is going on. And also, you know, uh, people talk a lot about the World War Two, but I couldn't make any kind of like, distinction that this is the way that they went to Baba or when they already defeat. So that is my kind of like first question when I did my research that, okay, when we heard the story, uh, how, how old are you, you know? Whether you are five, you know, how can I know that this your memory when you are five years old? It's, it's really that. So we did a lot of, you know, survey just to make sure that the memory that they, you know, remember is correct one, okay? So this is just to show you some of the place like the last four base camp. And, uh, oops, um, this is the, uh, when the Japanese, you know, start to operate. They uh, send the troop to a lot of place. And, uh, and this is, you know, this is all fighting down south and also in Ganjanaburi, you have a lot of uh, World War II capture from actually the history of the archaeology of Thailand, especially the scientific research, start after World War II because we took the war prisoner, uh, Professor Van Hekeren, from, uh, he was the director of the museum in Java. You know, the Japanese took him and moved him to Thailand, and he was a war prisoner there. So he collected the artifacts along the way that he built the railroad, and this is what happened. So this is such a bad memory, but this is the place that make people know about, uh, about, about like, you know, World War II in Thailand, and this is the when the Japanese came to, to Thailand, to Bangkok, and, uh, you know, this is the Prime Minister, Bo uh, Pibun Songkram. So... Okay, so uh, the route that uh, to let's let's you know talk about the the um, the one that will affect us is the the one that uh, is part start from Chiang Mai, you know, and the road actually that from Chiang Mai to Mahang Son that is World War Two road is the you know and uh, so there are three three uh, route that uh, the ja Japanese uh, built the road, and but the one that we will talk about is only here to here, 
is will go to Tong Wu uh, in Burma and then to uh, Impal. And the battle of Impal is when the Japanese you know, lost. And uh, when the American announced the war and joined the you know war, and then you know that is what happened. And uh, we saw a lot of uh, Chinese, um, not the Chinese, the uh, Burmese also, you know, women that came with this you know Japanese because they married the the uh, the uh, Burmese. Okay, so look, let's look at this. So the major you know one on this row is the the uh, Battle of Impal. The Impal is the capital of the state of uh, uh, actually Malibu in North uh, East India. And this is a start from March, you know, uh, 1944. But so it's mean that, you know, when I try to figure out the, the time period, because when I got the interview, people said that 1942 to 45, but I couldn't f really, you know, like, pin down the specific time. But uh, the battle is 1944, so they walk from 1942, 43, you know, and build the way, you know, build the route, you know, through Burma. But that is two two or three years that they, you know, that they build the, the way. And when people are talking about their memory, they all just say that, oh, we went there and to work, only male. But the female have no recollective, you know, memory. But it seems like the memory that they have is just like after, after a lot of soldier, you know, like uh, defeat from the war, and that is the memory that they remember the most. And and okay, let's see. This is the impal and how the you know how it look like. And uh, okay, so the way that they went to uh, Dong Wu and to Empower is this way, you know, and, and from, from Chiang Mai is like three way. And then the way that they defeat, re retreat route is just like, you know, uh, just one way. Go to Mang Son and then to Pai. Pai is the very famous kind of like, you know, uh, uh, district for the uh, uh, tourism and also to Chiang Mai. So you see the whole, you know, uh, route, the uh, different route that uh, went back. Um, okay. So this is like, uh, we have like uh, only 13 kilometer. The picture that I will uh, show you, only the, the route that is like 13 kilometer from the Thai side. And we found the uh, five important camps. You know, this is Hui. Don't, Hui is mean like river tributary, the small river tributary. Nam Yuam, Hui Plamung. This is all, not only camp, and also the cemeteries. You know, uh, okay. So, okay, let's move. So, the picture that you will see, just like this is the Hui Tonun, the, the um, camp. And this is the borderland, you know, between Thailand. When they across Thailand, the Japanese uh, bark the the symbol on the you know on the post that this is the we across the border between Thailand and Burma, you know. And what happened now is like because of the new prime minister of Thailand, you know, she opened the trade work between Thai and Burma, especially the borderland, and the Burmese start start the, they have an MOU, start building the road from Burmese, you know, and the Mang Son province, they will also build the road to Joy. In the future, we can have a, the trip that, you know, a road that can start from Thailand to go to uh, Burma. But what happened that's really scary is that I'm just really scared that the, the, um, the Burmese side, they might build on top of the, the, the old, you know, kind of like a World War II road. But anyway, but just to show you, this is the the um, borderland. So this is the kind of the picture that it show in the museum that uh, how the troop, you know, when, when they went to Burma to get you the, the scenery. And this is the today, the, the road that uh, from Mehong Son, to, from Chiang Mai to Mehong Son. We, we use this road, uh, you know, uh, nowadays. Okay, this is the kind of, you know, the scenery. 
And also along the way, we found the evidence of like Lana period, the historical kind of like, you know, uh, uh, evidence of the pottery from the earlier state of Thailand. So I did find the prehistoric uh, uh, evidence and also the, the historical period. I think that the road the Japanese uh, select perhaps is the kind of like the trail that the villager used it before. So there is the trail in the mountain ridge that people communicate with one another, so they rebuild that. And uh, sometimes they use the dynamite, you know, to explore this. But basically they use the, you know, the labor, forced labor in uh, this. And this is the kind of a general kind of like picture that when they walk and um, there. Okay. So the transport that you have, this one we assume that is perhaps like after they uh, defeat the war, because this is probably the cart that they took it from uh, when they got back from Burma, and this carry, you know, is the memory of the people, you know, that when they went to Burma is only truck, and the, you know they walk there, but the way back you see children, women, but the woman is just out of the context, you know, but uh, but some people, you know, saw a woman, Burmese woman, and also the cart carry all of the, you know, the wound, wounded uh, soldier on this, and uh, so this is, uh, and some truck like this, you know, and um, just to give you, you know, uh, this is, uh, we just recently kind of like figured out this is Toyota, this is Nissan, this is, you know, whatever. And along the way, the Japanese really, they have a team of engineers yeah, came with them. So, you know, for the road itself, the engineer have a transit. That is from the interview that, you know, that they set up the, how they're going to build the road. And also have a wire for the telegram. And it's very systematic. Before that, we didn't know, but when you walk for like, you know, five, every like five meter, five, three meter up there, you know, you saw the, this kind of like nail for the, for the uh, wire of like communication. Very, you know, well organized. And, um, and this is the camp. And also the bridge, bridge that they, they, they built. It's not just simple, you put the wood, no. It's very well constructed and then you were very strong. And uh, they select the good kind of like teak wood to make that. So it's really, really, so the, the group that, you know, uh, uh, came to make the, the road, is really kind of like, you know, a professional one, you know, before the real kind of like, uh, uh, for, um, uh, follow after that. This is the cemetery. This is one of the memory that the the, the people say that they just like they just uh, you know they have the dish and then throw the body into the dish. But this thing, uh, a lot of Japanese priests and also the the relative of the Japanese soldier came, you know, to. Uh, with the all kind of like spir spiritual kind of like, you know, uh, uh, ritual that they, you know, around here, just to, they search for the, the, the um, body. And still, I mean, you know, part of it, it's just only rumor that, oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. But it's, you know, they never really found anything. And uh, this is some of the bomb that we got. But fortunately, it's not, you know, working. And the uh, rifle just to show you, and a lot of uh, uh, truck. One is the, you know, I feel very frustrated here is um, because of uh, this truck was along the, it just, you know, when they walk for, this is from the interview, when the Japanese walk for a while, you know, and no, no gas, no um, nothing. So they left the truck. It's like hundred, hundred of them, you know. But this is only the leftover that we have, and people took the truck out of the context. So I have no idea that you know how it's you know like lay out, and uh, it just like kind of like you know have to interview people and said where did you exactly find it and how you know. So that is this is this one is show in uh, Kunyum, the World War Two Museum, and it's leave it all open like this. 
I did a lot of, you know, like campaign that we need to do the conservation because of this iron will not last forever. And within like, you know, a few years after it's like, you know, under the sun and rain and sun and rain for a few years, it's all gone. We have no, nothing left. And this is, you know, it's it, it just really a big um, frustration. And uh, also, okay, a lot of, you know, gun here and this is uh, my research assistant try to like trade back to the what kind of gun because actually we try to make a meaning for the artifacts this is for the from the uh, high rank officer or this is the low ranking or this is are there anything that we can understand them the Japanese as a human being you know, because it's somehow the picture that was pain in a lot of uh, picture, of course, you know, it's all the bad side. But but from the archaeological perspective, we like to see something that it can tell us in the different way. So anyway, okay, so let's look at the, oh, okay, let's just to show you this is the uh, past and the, okay. So the another thing that I like to talk about this is like memory and places. So what we have, we want to make sure that the memory that we have from the interview is not fiction. So we, we interview the individual from like at least 70 to 100, over 100, 104, you know, and, uh, and to check the collective memory that is that the same thing that happened Are you originally from here and uh, things like that. And we got the kind of like, key, uh, just two, you know, uh, two uh, key places in the memory of the people is cemetery and also hospital. And uh, this is the, you know, and the, how they help the, the villager, like, you know, because they, at the end of the war, some of them hide in the, before, before the, the ally came, the American or Brit came, they hide in the village, you know, and and ask like help help them like cooking or like you know how is the rice, and trade with the their belonging. So th that is the only part that people remember that. So it means that God the the whole thing that when people went to Burma, I don't get that. It's all the historical archive that I got that. But the but the interview that I got is after their defeat and they came back and then, you know, and there are some love story there. So happened here. So this is the the World War II memory. So you have, you know, the Shan and the Kareng and the, and interestingly that the first year that I did, oh, it's just so, you know, it's so great to get the information. But after a while, we went to another village. It's like uh, the Kareng. The, the Shan will say that, oh, we love them. The Japanese are really nice. The mochi is like, it came because of the, you know, our rice, kind of like sticky rice, it's very similar to mochi. So the, the Japanese love everything that in the, the culture there, you know, very remind them, the Japanese soldier, about their home, you know, in Japan. So the Shan talk about the Japanese, all oh, really good side. They love the Japanese. Whereas, you know, later, of, uh, a couple of years later on, the, the Korean, which is, is the ethnic minority, they said that, oh, they came and then they took our, you know, chicken, pig, and rice from home, and they all have to move to the new village, just in the jungle. So you get, you start to get the, like, the two sides or more than that of the memory. And uh, of the people and how how they you know view the the Japanese, okay, and this is the accountant and trust uh, a master. Well, you know someone who control the labor. So it means that within the the local population, you have the labor, and also you have someone that's good enough that the Japanese high as a accountant that oh you came to work today, how much money that you can get, and then you know things like that and control the labor and mobilize the labor around. This is, you know, just a small piece of uh, history that we, we can put together. And also reporter. 
I don't know how it works, but this is the reporter about the what is going on, you know. How is it the Japanese came or they went and that tie how it, you know, so he was the reporter. So you see that they are among the villagers who have the memory. The male always have the one that the you know, in the important position. But the woman they first show up. The woman went to sell the food and some of the women uh, went there and her grandmother in her memory she's ninety. Her mom told that, no, I'm not going to let you go there because of, you know, the Japanese will, you know, harass you or something like that. So you are, you know, still a teenager and uh, we don't want you to, you know, stay home. Just don't get closer to them. So that what happened to her because some of the Japanese kind of like, you know, have an eye on her. And she, she was the one, that, you know, that who can speak Japanese and sing the Japanese lullaby. But that is only a few years, maybe a year, that after, after the defeat, and the, they stay here for a year or some, you know, something like that. So they have, they develop quite a relationship, you know, during the, the, the after the, the uh, war. And uh, okay, let's see, this is the camp and hospital. When we walk, when we walk, you know, we walk from this, to the to the border, and I feel that I have no hope. But then when the we try to walk back also, you know, from the borderland, and to the every every place that the Japanese went, you know, according to the oral history, and came to this temple, and then you know what you saw is like golden pagoda, and the feeling that we got closer to this temple, I think that everyone of us without you know, kind of like talk to one another, we felt like it's a heaven. Especially in the winter, it's half a myth, you know, and it's just like, so we, we just thought that when we make a documentary, we thought that maybe that is the how the Japanese, you know, when they're a lot of wound Japanese and, you know, broken leg or, you know, whatever, they walk for many, many days, you know, from Burma uh, to here. Maybe this is what they feel. And the, the whole area is like very nice and peaceful. And uh, this is the hospital. And they live in the temple, and uh, most of them in the temple. So that's why uh, when the, some of the, our informants, when we, they were young, they, um, they collect the water for the Japanese. And they have a memory that the high-ranking officer will, will have a hot water. <laughs> So they have to boil water for them and, you know, things like that. That is the little thing. This is the kind of like the picture that uh, uh, of the wounded kind of like, you know, soldier when they walk back. And um, so they stay, you know, along the way for, it took them a very long time to get to the Kunyum uh, district. And this is some of the evidence of the medical supply. And uh, this is, the, okay, let's see, the burial pattern. Only the high-ranking person that in the, you know, just separate area. But all of the low-ranking, they, they will die a lot, and then they, they have a mass grave. And that is something that, you know, the Japanese government looking for. It. And this is the, the kind of high-ranking, you know, officer. This one that the archaeologists excavate the, the, the site and we found the personal belonging. You know, I haven't really studied a Japanese kind of like artifacts, but uh, some of it that my colleague told that it's like mother will, will uh, gave to the son before, you know, they, most of them are, were teenager. So the mother have the like family stuff and gave it and, uh, and it's, it, it's with the, you know, burial that we have. Okay, and this is the camp, and then this is airport. They also have the, you know, airport. Okay. So what happened after the war? This is the thing that happened. Every all the Japanese were uh, forced to abandon all of their their, especially the weapon. But from the our interview, you know, the villager never collect the the weapon because the Thai government make an announcement that you cannot touch anything that belongs to the Japanese. 
So during the war, maybe nothing that you know people will not collect that. But there are some in the family. Some family have the Japanese kind, of like you know, helmet or coat or you know some canteen, because the Japanese soldier exchange for the food like you know, uh, banana or you know sticky rice or something like that, and uh, that what happened that. In the household, when we did when we did the interview, you know, we 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 saw that, and they are, you know, they start to have the form of attachment that happen, you know, and uh, this is uh, another thing that happened that, um, and uh, it will be the my kind of like another uh, portion that I was talking about. See, after the war, you know, that that we all know in Thailand. The tourist authority of Thailand, you know, want to promote the tourism. Of course, it's like everywhere. So World War II is the heritage tourism, and this this is very big thing there. So there is a you know big they, the the government gave the money for the local you know museum to develop like new museum, and then then they have a video for the first time about the story of this. And what happened? Uh, I will talk about the, the the presentation of the you know representation of the the World War II. Whether this is a friendship or the enemy, or this is whose heritage? Is this like you know if some of you study the uh, heritage, cultural heritage, is this the Japanese or this is our like Thai cultural heritage? Who have a right to really, you know, like work on this or control this or, but it's obviously, this, you know, is a bad memory for the Japanese, you know, because every time that the Japanese came there, it just really, I mean, it's such a. I think that it's very hard for them to really look at that this stuff, and also the heritage tourism. There's a lot of competition, you know, among the villager. After that, this has been, you know, kind of like uh, promoted by the government. Okay, let's look at this. The representation in Ganjanaburi is kind of like, you know, bad in comparison to uh, to Mahong Song. It's like this is the picture, and uh, people work very hard. And uh, and uh, let's look at this. But in Kunyuom, you know, when they make the museum, there's a you know exhibition and also. Uh, documentary, and the picture of the Thai. This is the kind of like environment that the local sell the food to the Japanese. You know, this is probably 1944 or 45, and this is the it show. You know, the picture specifically show the friendship. So the whole thing about the museum is show. You know, is make the story. This is the friendship. Nice kind of like relationship between Thai and also the Japanese, and you can see the picture of the Japanese soldier help the you know uh, villager and woman to you know um, do a lot of work. Actually, we have a, a different one, but um, only the Chan you know that have those kind of relationship partially because Chan was a, a merchant. You know, uh, among the ethnic group that you know in Thailand, Chan has been known as a merchant. So they make a long distance trade, you know, throughout like Yunnan, Burma, and also you know Laos, and this is so because of their merchants. So they, you know, the, this is the a lot of thing that they get is perhaps is the way that they view, you know. So that is kind of like uh, friendship and also. But for the Karen and the other ethnic groups, this this uh, the Japanese are real, you know, were really bad. Like you know, they rob thing, they rape women, you know, thing like that. But the case is not that violent, like in Japan and also the in uh, China or Korea, you know. And uh, this is the exchange item that we found. Anyway, okay, let's look at this. So what happened if you, some of you, study the the Thai history or Thai movie or modern, you know, kind of like contemporary Thai, you probably will have to hear about this movie Kukam. Kukam is the love story between the 
young Japanese soldier and also the Thai, you know, woman who live in Bangkok. And it's very popular and it's made for many, many, many versions. So then the, the highlight here, you know, highlight here in the museum, in the museum at Khun Yuom, the local museum, is, is portray the picture of the love story, believe it or not. I mean, you know, you have a lot of picture in there. But the whole documentary is about the love story. You know, this is everyone that went to that, you know, local museum. You have to sit down in this room and then you watch this movie. And it's supposed to show the, you know, the how great of the Japanese and we are friends. And, uh, okay, let's look at this. So this is the Bak Gao or Ui or, or, you know, grandmother Gao, uh, Sun Sima, she's a native Khun Yuom. She just recently died and she got the the bat from the the Japanese emperor just to, you know, show the his kind of like gratitude that she saved the Japanese, you know, and uh, she married the, the Japanese. And uh, this is her, you know, the gift from the emperor. What happened is that, like that, you know, when we, we uh, interviewed, so because we heard a lot, a lot about the, the, the uh, woman, you know, uh, and the bad memory of the uh, Korean, right, woman, and also the, the um, Japan uh, or the Chinese. So we specifically asked that, were there any, you know, women there, any kind of like, you know, uh, who came? And, and some of them, a lot of them didn't remember, but some of them said that, yeah, I saw the Japanese, uh, the Burmese woman came. And also we have a house of the, some, you know, woman that she comfort of the, you know, Japanese woman. So then I, you know, I start to like really curious. She never, you know, but gal or uh, uh, grandmother gal never talk about, you know, anything like uh, beyond like, oh, you married the uh, Fukuda. Lieutenant Fukuda, and then how many children did you have? That is, she, her, she, you know, after this this documentary, she was on the news all the time. So the the picture that has been painted for her is just like she's just you know sweet lady, whatever. But the thing is, we start to like really curious. Is this the true story? When she was young and Fukuda hiding in her house, did they accept her? You know, because she she married to the she didn't marry, but she have a son, two son, and it's quiet. And I asked her that you know during that time, what did people talking about you or how did you know would they accept? She never answered that, you know. So I thought that actually you know maybe married to the Japanese is not that you know portrayed by the movie. You see what I mean? But this is movie because it's built, you know, because the museum built later on. So they rebuild, uh, you know, like I thought that this is, you know, is rebuild the uh, history and is, is, you know, the representation that it's given is not the good one. And also the Japanese, Thai Japanese Foundation want to build the Japanese town. They want to build the little Japan specifically uh, you know, have the older Japanese, older Japanese to retire here. And I thought that, you know, this is, <laughs> this is a little bit too much, I think. And because of the Kunyuam have a hot spring, so they say it's perfect. You know, we can tr make the hot spring bathtub and make a little. So because of our work that we present our work about the what, we didn't even know the real history of what is going on. You know, you're going to do a lot of tourism, do a lot of things. But, you know, the first thing that we have to do is interview all of the witness that's still living in you, you know, continue living before you do something else. Or let the, the make the Japanese town. And so a lot of protesting and, you know, happen. And they decide a new museum. And finally, this is what happened. Everyone fighting for the, to control this. And what happened is, you know what? This is a new museum. So the locals say that, no, this is, you know, people who come here doesn't know anything about us. So we need to have a museum that represent the local people, represent the Shan, represent the local community, not just simply World War II. But see, the, the, the kind of the merit of the museum that have found at the beginning, it's gone. 
because it's all mixed. And this is, I just want to show you very quick, this is the old one, yeah. And this is what this has, and it's kind of cute little museum, and you know, even though it's not like what you see here, but it has, you know, a lot of evidence. But now, this is all gone. And it's, you know, and it's just only a few pieces that's still here. And it's no one care, you know, and I will show it where it is. So what has happened, you know, after this? It's just like uh, people fighting about this. And finally, the local, you know, can get back to this, but they don't care about World War II. But I told that, you know, even though you don't care, this is part of the world prehistory. It's the world heritage. It is something, you know, maybe, you know, I thought that it's still meaningful to as a history of mankind that it, we need to have it to remind ourselves that we don't need a war, any more war, you know, so we have this. But still, what happened is like, the villagers start to have a competition among themselves because any part that World War II route, you know, passed, they want to make a tourism. They want to make a benefit out of this. And the worst thing is like, um, they took some of the artifacts from here, you know, with inventory, already have an inventory, left in the jungle and placed along the route and say that, oh, this is the Japanese, you know, stuff. And I thought that, you know, this is a kind of like really big issue that for us and that archaeologists that how we gonna, you know, really communicate this. We need to do more in terms of like community archaeology and uh, to really working with the community. Okay, I just gonna, you know, so um, let's see. So the mega tourism, so we went there. So this is used to be in the, in the museum. It's really have a inventory because uh, I asked my student to take all of the picture and look at the all the you know kind of like inventory before they they change the museum and move thing around. So I thought that this is something that we, we need to do, and we did the kind of like uh, workshop training. All the history of the the the, the World War Two it came from us, which is we we don't want to do that. The history should be you know like by the local that who make that, but that is the the collect the researching about the you know uh, the past is the last thing that that people want to do. But they want to do the fast track thing first is like tourism, and this is the what happened, and you can see the motorcycle here. They want to have an adventure, adventurous, you know, kind of tourism by using the motorbike <laughs> to the side. And I told no, because we still have a lot of tree, have a lot of uh, herbal medicine, you know, and also a lot of uh, animal. If you allow people to take the motorcycle there, you destroy your own environment, you know, and also the this is will not uh, no longer preserve. And this is what happened, you know, actually, uh, you know, people just kind of like come to the, the uh, artifacts and then take the picture. And, uh, and this is the memory, memorial kind of like, you know, stone at the many places in Kunyuam. And this is part of the one cemetery, uh, 1800, uh, you know, thousand, 18,000 uh, soldiers die in this particular spot, and they have a memory and a thing like that. Okay, this is all my, you know, uh, talk, and I think that uh, what we are trying to do also, that we make a few documentary and try to make more, because we, we collect a lot of information after we, um, finish all the, you know, we work there for five years now, I think that uh, we have only a few people that who, you know left, and that is we try to propose it to the to the community that we work a lot with the community and propose it to them that we need to do a lot of oral history, oral interview, and also you know, um, but the the only you know information that have is from our you know project and all some of the uh, amateur you know. Um, um, who interested in this? He conserved the the all of the World War Two, you know, artifacts. He he also did the interview and tried to write a book about this also. So this is a part of the you know history that I hope that you 
uh, learn something from it. Yeah. So. Are there groups in Japan that are interested in the, in this project, or specific groups? There are a group that um, uh, the I think that the monk, Japanese monk, and also the relative, the Japanese, the the relative of the soldier that they still kind of like they have a foundation that did specifically, you know, search for the body of the soldier, and uh, that what happened in in there. So uh, they work with the local uh, kind of like, you know, villager and in some cases work with the fire art department to excavate the, if they, they kind of like found the burial, yeah. Uh, have any Japanese soldiers who were there returned? Yeah, yeah, they returned. And uh, now I think it's only less than very few, you know, that's still alive. Or if they're alive, they cannot, you know, travel. Yeah, but we have the, because of the, the person that, who is an amateur, that who collect all of the Japanese, uh, you know, all of these uh, artifacts, he got uh, um, a badge from the, you know, from the emperor that, that he saved the Japanese history, and he, he in touch with a lot of Japanese soldiers, and he collect the, information from from them also so he got the you know uh, the document and the map that because the and he told me also that the Japanese uh, soldier who's still alive they drew the map that where is the where is the uh, burial you know they they write every name that if someone dies somewhere and then you know they have kind of like a manual among themselves but uh, but we haven't, you know, uh, tried to do any kind of excavation or search for that because as soon as we work on that, God, I mean, you know, it will be very difficult for me to, to work because a lot of people will kind of like, you know, watch you and including the Japanese government, you know, they prefer to have, have their own kind of like team to, to work. Yeah. Yes. The only thing is like, you know, uh, the Japanese, is it's kind of like something, um, the sticky rice is like mochi, you know, the, the, the kind of like dessert that, uh, you know, some people say that this is prob when the Japanese came and then they make the dessert, they teach the local, you know, like the dessert, but it's very hard to, to say because the, the Chan also make the, uh, sticky rice dessert as well, but but that is what you know people say. But uh, apart than that, I don't think in terms of culture itself, you know, I don't see it. You know, really, um, yeah, I don't see that. Yeah. Um. Please join me in thanking Ajahn Rasmus.